Well, how do we find freedom from our worries? One of my favorite answers to this question is from the Apostle Paul in Romans 8, verses 13 to 15. There he writes this, quote, For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. We battle sin to be freed from worry, and in that battle we demonstrate our faith in Jesus Christ and in his work for us. Here's Pastor John preaching on this text back in 2002 to explain. Ask yourself this question, why didn't the Bible just teach me to defeat sin by asking the Holy Spirit to do it? Why isn't prayer the be-all and end-all of this battle? So here comes a temptation to either feel discouraged about finances or to feel fearful because you're sick or to feel proud because you did something right. Why at that moment isn't the way of killing that simply say, Holy Spirit, I ask you to come now and defeat the sin in my life. Amen. And it's done. Ask and you will receive, right? Wrong. Why? Jesus gets no glory if you do it that way. The reason it says in Galatians 3, 5, that the Holy Spirit is supplied and becomes miracle working in power by hearing with faith is because if you left out the hearing dimension, namely hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ and the promises that he bought for you by his blood, if Jesus doesn't get the credit for those promises that you're laying hold of, then he won't get any glory. He's just out of the equation. And you might now and then think, well, theologically, I guess he's the foundation of everything. Well, you know what? Foundations in your house get no attention. You don't go through the day saying, I'm so thankful that I have a 12-course basement. I love those cement blocks. They're so pretty. You don't even think about the foundation in your house. So to say every now and then, Jesus is the foundation of everything, so what? He gets no glory if you never talk about it, you never sing about it, you never, you never bank on his blood to buy for you. The promise is, do you remember what 2 Corinthians 1.20 says? All the promises of God are yes in Jesus. What that means is, when you live your Christian life by picking a promise, banking on it, plugging in, faith goes into the word of God. You know who bought this for you? Jesus. We're sinners. I'm a sinner. I don't deserve any promise of God fulfilled in my life. How can I count on the promises of God being fulfilled in my life? One thing. Christ died for me. Christ bought every promise for John Piper. This is the new covenant. Christ shed his blood so that I can pick anywhere in the Bible and say, I'll take that promise for today. I'll help you. I'll strengthen you. I'll hold you up in my victorious right hand. I'll fight for you. I'll supply your needs. I can pick that promise. Why? Because I'm, I'm deserving? No way. Because Jesus is deserving and I trust Jesus and he gives it to me. So that's the second thing to observe. And let me close now with a couple of illustrations. We got three missionary families that have gone out from this church who are walking through the darkest waters of eviction from Tanzania this very moment that we've ever had. And put yourself in their shoes right now. They've been given a 30-day notice out of here with all your families and all your belongings. It's the only home their children have ever known. Denise wrote us last Easter. And she wrote it. We got it on Easter. And she wrote the email the night before Easter. And this is what she said. She's picturing the disciples between Good Friday and Easter. They are sitting quietly and numbly at someone's house. And they don't know about the resurrection that is to come. That's what this time feels like to us in many ways. Darkness, an unknown future. Out of the blue, we're packing up and leaving the country. Our home for the last seven years. The only home our children have known. Now, ask yourself, what are the sins threatening here? 
Here are the ones I thought of. Anger. Despair. Self-pity. Fear. Impatience. Irritability. Those are a few sins that would threaten to rise up in the Bill Horns and the Andersons and the Rasmussens right now. Now listen to this warrior, Denise, in her email as an embodiment of this sermon. We are clinging to these truths. Do you hear it? Do you hear it? We are clinging to truth. No vague notion of a God out there somewhere who's nice. We are clinging to particular truths. We are clinging to these truths. God is good. He is in control. He loves us more than we can comprehend. He has plans to give us a hope and a future. Plans to prosper us. Sound familiar? Our spirits are understandably low. We are emotionally and physically exhausted. But, all caps, because the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. And thus she puts to death the deeds of the body. One more illustration. Rich and Tricia Dilworth were here for several years until they left last year to go to Africa with three small children. They worked with refugees in the community, learning language and so on. They're going to a country that is so fragile, so hostile that they can't name it. And imagine three small children, young couple, going to a destitute land with no infrastructure, a religion that is hostile to Christianity. What kinds of things would arise in your mind as you make such an obedient plan? Let me quote from his letter. This is the February newsletter that I got. It's one of the most powerful applications of this message in a missionary letter. And I've read many and all our missionaries get this, I think, and they weave it into their letters. But this one was remarkable. Whereas the constitution of this country may state one thing, the word of God says, the one who is in you is greater than the one who's in the world. Where fear says, what if blank happens? Faith says, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. When worry surfaces, faith responds, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. When doubt and frustration scoff, saying, they'll never change. This is a waste of time. Jesus looks us in the eye and responds, With man, this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. We need to become the kind of people who, when we're walking across a bridge or walking between offices or walking into a classroom, young people are nervous about some test or something, where you're, where you're walking down the hall and you wonder, yikes, did I wear the wrong color today or whatever? Am I going to be viewed funny? If you believe he's right here, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. And he says, all things are possible with me. Trust me. I love you. I will take care of you. I'll supply all your needs. I like you. I died for you. I have counted you righteous. I and mean, would not you become a free person? It's failing to hear specific Christ-spoken promises moment by moment through the day that lets us sink so badly. Learn from our missionaries. Learn from the Apostle Paul. Put to death the deeds of the body. Put to death the flesh. Put to death sin. By the Spirit. That is, by setting your mind on the things of the Spirit. That is, on the Word of God. Hearing with faith and trust them. And in this way, peace will come. The Holy Spirit will flow. Power will be given, sins will be slain, Satan will be pushed back, and Jesus Christ, who bought all those promises, will be magnified. 
Amen. That was from Pastor John's sermon 18 years ago from April 7th, 2002, titled Kill Sin with the Word of God. The entire message can be downloaded at DesiringGod.org. Thanks for listening. If you want new episodes of this podcast delivered to you, subscribe to Ask Pastor John in your favorite podcast app in Spotify or by subscribing to DG's YouTube channel. And to find other episodes in our archive or to submit a question to us of your own, do that online at DesiringGod.org forward slash Ask Pastor John. Well, can I only be saved if I comprehend the Trinity? And if so, how much of the Trinity must make sense to me? So many people ask this question, and it's up next time on Friday with Pastor John back in the studio. Don't miss this one. We'll see you then. See you on Friday.